Hey guys, this is uh, Mr. Finn. I'll try to do a uh, little quick lesson here, just a little check to make sure we can get this online uh, situation all straight. I'm at my home office, actually at my dining room table. I just want to check out the background. Does that make you look, look good? Feel look good or what? A little sunset. I don't know where that's from, but it looks nice. Anyway, a um, couple things. Number one, uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to post the uh, times for the Google Hangout. So if you guys have questions or you just want to check in, if you don't feel like emailing them, or you just want to jump on, have a quick conversation. I'll have the time set up for our fifth hour class. Uh, secondly, I'm going to try to make sure that the videos and the lessons correspond. Um, for this unit, what we're probably going to do is just make it completely optional. Uh, for the two-week time frame, it should really take us to the end of waves. If it doesn't, then uh, we'll figure out some things. I also have a lab I'm going to upload by Thursday. That, uh, if you guys want to do that as a maybe a substitute lab for the ones that we've done, or or just uh, something you want to just maybe replace scores with, that's fine too. So we'll figure out how to work all that by the end of the week. Anyway. Um, Celebrate student success time. I only had one student from last weekend turn in the uh, extra work. This was not this past weekend, but the weekend before. So that student has to be the student of the week from last week. Alex Rice. Congratulations, Alex. If I had the recliner chair, I'd give it to you. Obviously, I do not have the recliner chair with me. So uh, anyway, if I did have the chair, you would get the chair. And that problem was a little bit unique, so I want to go with it, over it with you real fast. So let me just uh, turn the camera around here. So anyway, this is the problem. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember it, but Alex turned this in. I believe you had a force approach, which you certainly can do, Alex. A force approach, which would be anything. You know, you've got your uh, normal force. You've got the x direction and y direction. You can tilt it because this is a ball rolling down an incline. I don't know how many of you guys remember this problem, but a uh, ball rolling down an incline. It asks you about the acceleration. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take... Uh, the net torque on the ball, and we're going to make that equal to I times alpha, because any I times net acceleration angularly will be because of the torque. Um, I have here on my left a diagram, and that diagram, I don't know if you can see this here, try to move it a little closer. You've got uh, the angle of the incline, you've got the ball going down there, and the ball has a weight. The weight goes right down through the middle. But remember, guys, this type of ball on an incline is going to roll because the weight provides a torque. So this little diamond shape here, this little triangle, rather, is the fulcrum on which the ball will rotate at any time. It's not going to rotate on its own axis. That would be if the ball was stationary and just rotating on its internal axis, but it's not. It's translating and rotating. So my weight going down... I've got my radius of the ball that I'm going to draw right to my principal uh, or my uh, pivot point there. And I'm going to draw this little perpendicular here, perpendicular lever arm. Let me just draw this little perpendicular value right in there. Yeah. That L is actually the lever arm for the torque. So 
I got this angle here by uh, some geometry principle where I've got the uh, same angles here. And then uh, this is like the vertical angle theorem where you go across and find that angle there. And then, of course, that will give you this angle inside there. So I think this might be a little bit quicker than what you did. So I also just going to move over to the right here and just give you the setup. I think you guys can follow this pretty well. So my I alpha, if I take the inertia of the ball there, two-fifths mr squared, and A over R, that's just the definition of angular acceleration. Now that will actually give you a chance to calculate or cross out the R with one of those R's. And then down here, as you get down to the bottom, I'll do a row in here, that weight... This weight will give you mg, and you're going to make L in terms of R. So we'll have to do the geometry there. Looks like it would just be R cosine theta, or I'm sorry, alpha, where alpha is a different angle than theta, because you have the theta angle in there. But anyway, great job on the one that you gave me. I'll take the rest of you guys. I'll be evaluating the uh, extra work that you gave me. I think I already had that recorded. So we'll get back to you in a second. Anyway, I hope that works. Uh, tomorrow I'll give you guys the dates for the Google Hangout. There's some times and days that we're supposed to be available for you guys. And of course, I'll be available for you as much as possible. Uh, if you have a question, you can always email it in, as you guys have always done for the rest of the year. Uh, that seems to work well. Um, hope you guys are having a good uh, couple of days here. We're officially online starting Thursday, but I'm trying to get some stuff uh, ready for you give myself a little practice too. I'm a bit of an amateur. So anyway, I'll be evaluating the rest of the stuff tomorrow, get you Google Hangout times and days, and uh, I'll keep the Google, the Google Doc updated so you guys can practice on some of those questions and problems. And of course, I'll be always doing those video links that I always have during class. Anyway, that should be up for today. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow.